What's up, guys? So welcome to the Video CEO Podcast. So the main objective in this podcast is to interview high-level content agency owners to get their insights, what they do, how they market, uh, and how they were able to scale their agency to such high levels. So today we have my boy Ridge. Ridge, thanks for being on Man, today. How you doing, um, bro? You know, so Ridge, basically, you know, I won't speak for himself, but first thing, Ridge, um, I like to just jump right into it. Um, what have you what have you succeeded in the content agency space? What have you done so far? Makes cool videos for people. Uh, we, so we scaled a, uh, an agency. It's about 40K a month. Lean team. Um, one was right here, actually. Helped me out with a bunch of projects. He's a stud. Will's awesome. Um, lean team, 70, 65, 70% margins hovering around. I really built it for like the lifestyle aspect because mm -hmm. I, I, I'll be totally honest. I didn't have like any crazy desires to want to be like huge CEO, you know, multiple six figures a month. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just want to be able to make an impact on select few clients, work closely and intent, intent, intently with them, right. high touch, good margins, lean team, and then not work myself into the ground. So that's kind of what I wanted to build. That's what we ended up building. Yeah. Um, so that's what we did. Now we ended up pivoting to coaching and uh, showing other guys how to build a similar model. And now we're here in Montana for the collective event, which you came out to awesome Amazing. to hang out, which yeah. is awesome too. But yeah, dude, that's what we did. Fire. And then, so people watching this, there's going to be a lot of like beginners and stuff like that. So if someone who's just kind of brand new or maybe, you know, a little bit in it, um, what are kind of, kind of first steps they can do to kind of get into this space? Dude, that's the question, isn't it? So yeah. give me a little bit more context. So like, what's the current state of the person you think listening to this? Most of the guys. I'd probably say. Like just picked up camera, wants to learn, or like they know the basics, but they don't know a ton about acquisition. Like what's the state? Yeah. So this is some, this is a videographer who is a glorified freelancer doing yeah. videos on their own, you know, doing all the editing themselves. You know, they're making maybe anywhere from three to 8K a month, maybe sure. um, just doing videos. So someone like that, like what is the first step for someone to go from a glorified freelancer to an actual content agency owner like yourself? Get clear on the problem you solve. And a lot of guys will probably hear that and be like, oh yeah. But like seriously, get really clear on it. And then once you're clear on the problem you solve, understand the value of solving said problem, right? right? It's like, well, one thing I will say is read books. We have like the core four that we recommend mm -hmm. in our program. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know Cromosi. Read, read uh, $100 million offers, $100 million dollar leads. Just the basics of like, yeah really good offers, what makes a good offer, what goes into understanding value in the marketplace, how to solve problems, all that good stuff. And then read $100 million leads, which is again, just the basics of lead generation, right? Because if you can get really good at marketing and then really good at sales, that's it's really it. That's what most people struggle with, right? So get really clear on the problem that you solve, which is a lot easier said than done. <laughs> no, I agree. So when you first started your agency, what was kind of like one of the first things that you failed at where it kind of like was like, oh shit, like everything. Okay. So <laughs> na name some of those failures. What are some yeah. failures in the very beginning? Well, so I think there's a natural evolution of videographers, right? Yeah. They start off usually pretty young, picking up a camera for the first time, some maybe by accident, and then yeah. they make a video and they're like, oh, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And then somebody happens to come along, and at least this is my situation. A lot of you can probably relate, maybe. I don't know how you guys got started, but picked up a camera, made a video for someone, and then somebody comes along and they're like, can you make a video for me? And you're like, sure. It's like, well, what, what, are your, what are your rates? And you're like, you mean like you want to pay me? <laughs> Let me tell you. And yeah, it's like, well, I'm, I'll do it for like yeah. 100 bucks. And they're like, oh, I'll, yeah, sure. And they pay me 100 bucks. I was like, I made $100 making a video. Yeah. And so that's like what starts it. And then you're like, dude, I can make money doing what I enjoy doing, which is making videos. So it starts as a hobby. It yep. starts as like a creative passion. And then we try to figure out, and this is usually between like one and 5K a month, like we try to figure out how can I maybe turn this into a career? And then you start getting to maybe five to 10. Um, you start to get a little more clarity on the offer. Once you hit 10, if you wanna, you're either gonna be bottlenecked because you're, not, you're just gonna be hovering around there from like word of mouth referrals, just making videos. You're not a business owner, you're a glorified freelancer, right? If you wanna go from 10 and above, that's when you guys are really start figuring things out. You have to start building the team, start building systems and processes on the back end, start niching down, which is the hardest part, in my opinion. Yeah. Like most people struggle with just niching down, try, finding that perfect niche. But what was your question? Like what was the biggest thing I struggled with? Yeah. Dude, I, I mean, getting clear on the problem that I solved. Got it. Right? Because I, I just made videos. And one big thing that I think I messed up on was I tried to craft an offer that I wanted the marketplace to want, not what they actually needed. I want them to want videos. And I think they want videos, but I never understood why do they want videos. Mm, fire. Right? So for anyone watching, I think one of the biggest struggles is like the offer. Like, what do I offer? Who do I find this, that? Yeah. If you had to create, you know, from the top of your head, you know, an offer, like a simple offer, if you were just starting out knowing the knowledge that you have now, what would that offer be? Well, so it's funny. I was just talking with them about this with them in there because they were yeah. like, 
if you started over from scratch with the agency, like what would you do different, do differently? And I, my response was everything <laughs> it's differently. Yeah. But if I were to start over from scratch now, granted, this is difficult to do without experience in the field, without the knowledge and the know-how. And like, I've, yeah. I, it's one thing to build an agency once and be like, this is what worked really well for me. It's another to like get in the coaching space yeah. and start gathering all this data from all these other guys that have different archetypes, different personalities, different cities, populations, different offers, models, skill sets. And you start gathering all this data of like what actually works, what doesn't, high level principles. And then you start really going down deep on, okay, this is really what works, if that makes any sense. Um, and so after gathering all this data, if I were to start over, my answer is I would do everything differently. But if I were to start over, I would pick the niche right out the gate. I would pick something that I have a good knowledge in, the business model. That's yeah. huge. Like it's yeah. like, for example, uh, Alex behind the camera over here, he works with roofers. They're one of the top three I would probably work with if I started the agency over again. And yeah. I would only work with roofers, right? I wouldn't just make videos for other people. Yeah. I would do video. So then this is transitioning over to what is the offer. I would pick a niche that actually needs it. And then I would offer video plus ads plus consulting, hmm. right? Because the end of the day, and this is, this is something that a lot of listeners might go like, oh, I didn't want to hear that. You got to run ads. Got it. You need ads. I really believe, unless you already have a solid brand that you've been building for a long time, yeah. and then you're really just kind of taking over fulfillment of we'll just cover making videos for you. Yeah. And even then, it's like I'm not the huge biggest fan of, but if you really want to add value, content is really important, yeah. but it's the ads that are going to add the predictability, the numbers that business owners want to see. Because like cool videos are cool and all, but how do you justify spending 10 grand on videos if they're not going to get you results? Yeah, you know I, what I mean? I agree. Okay, so I'm gonna hit you with a couple, I guess, limiting beliefs that people has or have, and then I want you to basically tell me how people can solve that or you know what they can do to kind of get over that. Okay, so, I'll do that. You're good with the rapid fire questions, then I wanna go to you, but let's answer okay, that real quick, yeah, so yeah, go yeah. ahead. So, so I got questions for you too. <laughs> yeah, cool, perfect, perfect. First one, I can't charge more. I can't charge more or I don't know how to charge more? I don't know how to charge more. You will only ever make as much money as you believe you're worth. And that's difficult. It's really difficult to like believe genuinely that you're worth more when you aren't really clear on the problem you solve, for one. And also too, like when you haven't just forced yourself to go out there, make the money, and then develop that conviction underneath. So that is so true. There's this, there's this book, I, full transparency, haven't read all the way through. But <laughs> for what I've read so far, it's actually really yeah, yeah. It's called The Energy of Money. Have you read it? Have you heard no, of it? No, never read it. Definitely recommend it. Energy of Money, it's awesome. So like you need, the way you need to look at money is it's like, it's energy that is passing through. It's mm. flowing. It's ever flowing, right? Yeah. Money will come and go. I yeah. think a lot of guys too will always like, especially when you don't have a lot of money, you start making money, you want to hoard it and keep it. Yeah. And people are super risk averse naturally, which by the way, if you're really risk averse, just, just go get a job. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't even try to, yeah. to be an entrepreneur. Like you, you literally are going to live for, you have to live by, by taking risks, but the way that you charge more is force, first being getting really clear on the problem you solve, having confidence and conviction in the fact that you actually know how to deliver that result. And then also understanding like when you meet, when you read $100 million offers, the simple idea of the value equation, yeah. like it's super simple. I think every, most people know it by now um, that have been in business for, for a minute and have read the books. But the simple concept of the value equation helps paint a, hu a much clearer picture on worth and value. Right, because it seems really subjective when there's no quantifiable metrics involved. But then you read that, and it starts to actually make sense. So, to answer your question, I would say first, uh, I would read that book. Honestly, in my opinion, I would probably yep. reread it again, get a, a much better understanding for how value is conceptualized in the marketplace, and then that'll help you start to hopefully have some some clicks happen, and then be yeah. able to go, okay, this makes sense. Like, well, how much do I charge for this? Well, how much money are you going to make for this person? Yep. Ideally, like you want to charge whatever the investment is. They'll make 10 X more than what 10 X 10 X more than what they pay. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the idea. Right? Yeah. And I agree with that. So like one of the first things when I started uh, my agency um, or when I was doing sales calls and all that stuff was I got obsessed with learning how to solve those results. Like I, I was so clear on the exact problem they had and I was so confident in, that they needed this and I studied yeah. the shit out of it. Right. I studied Alex Ramosi, Ryan yep. Pineda when they were popping, Pace Morby, all these top guys. And I was like, what are they doing? I, I need to know. Right. I, I even went as long or I even went as far as doing interviews with like their video guys, with their content team. Like I literally paid uh, Alex Ramosi's content director like 800 bucks at the time. So it was like two years ago and now he probably charges a lot more to learn their systems. Like, yo, how is he doing how, ideas? How much money have you spent on education? Education, probably 25, 30 grand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. another thing too, is like pay to play. Yeah. You know, like if you want to like, it, it sounds really s kind of stupid and simple, but like 
And at Ocean, I talk about this a lot too. And it's so true. Like, well, I don't know how to charge more. Okay. Yeah. This is going to sound kind of uh, uh, like you guys are listening. Are probably gonna be like, Oh, you're both coaches. Like, of course you would say that. Go find someone that's done it before and pay them and they'll show you how to do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like that, at the end of the day, if you want to summarize everything, just go find someone, speed up the process and just learn exactly how to do it from yeah, them. Right. Exactly. Like this dude. But yeah, I, I, I totally agree, man. Like you, you probably have done. How many sales calls do you think you've had or you've done? Bro. Hundreds, bro. Are you even... still taking sales calls? Every now and then. If it's okay. a high level client. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you I agree or disagree. You probably learned a crap ton from just sales calls oh, and asking questions. 100%. Yeah. 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 And yeah. what I like about sales calls, uh, like on that topic is, bro, you, yeah, you get to learn a lot about it and then you get to learn interactions with people, how they feel, how to persuade them to feel a certain way, um, hit them with certain questions where they're like, yeah, that, that makes sense. It clicks. So again, it, it goes back to like having conviction and confidence with the things you study. You know, when I did mm -hmm. these interviews with, you know, the behind the scene guys like Alex Ramosi's guy and all these people, I learned, I was so confident exactly what these people needed. So when I was on those sales calls, they're like, okay this is what i need Let, yeah where can i pay you for sure so what do you think about because i'm putting myself back in the shoes of back when i was barely making a few grand a month what questions that i have and i think another big one that i hear a lot too is how do you bridge the gap that limbo between well how do i navigate a productive sales call and actually close somebody and help them develop conviction that i know what i'm doing yeah. when i haven't done it yet you know what i mean like how do i how do i get my foot in the door to work with someone to be able to get the case study, get the results, build the conviction and confidence that I do know what I'm doing and then go re-implement and replicate from there. Got it. Um, so I think confidence comes from just having knowledge, right? Like I think if you don't know what you don't know, you won't have the confidence to speak about it. So I think it goes back to like just studying and becoming obsessed with it. So like by the time I had my first like kind of official sales calls, I pretty much knew fucking everything, A to Z. Like exactly oh. what they needed. About how many sales calls do you think that took? For what? For you to, you, you're like, after I took sales calls, I knew everything I needed to know. Like no, no, how was, many reps? Is well, that what you said? No, no. So what I said oh. is that I studied pretty much everything. Like I studied, yeah. you know, personal oh, branding, gotcha. this, that with okay. the top guys that when I took my first sales call or when I first started taking them, I was already so confident in that. So gotcha. I, think it's okay. just, I think it's just knowledge. Gathering information. Yes, gathering information. Yeah. So what, do you, what do you think of the best sources for information gathering? Like reading books, podcasts, like what, what's your uh, I would say, yeah, reading books, podcast. Um, I think think definitely obviously hiring a coach right hiring, sure, hiring yeah. a coach who's already done it uh but i would say for the most part like youtube bro i'm like heavy on youtube like everything you want to learn it's yeah. on it's on youtube yeah definitely pretty much dude I, ocean said something yesterday that and he said it before yeah. and i 100 percent agree it's the way that he worded it i was like dude that is spot on the quality yeah. of your business will be determined by by the quality of the questions that you ask yeah i can i can gauge somebody's intellect emotional intelligence and potential success in their career based on how little they speak and how many questions they ask and how much they listen. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, would you agree or disagree? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you think everybody can be a successful content agency owner? Oh. Regardless of all the knowledge they have, you can give them literally the frameworks, knowledge, all that stuff. Do you think everyone could still succeed? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if I'm qualified enough to like, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I would like to say yes. Yeah. Um, but then I have the, you know, the, the idea goes through my mind of like, what are the, what are the principles, traits, and skill sets you need to develop? Yeah. And then that goes into the question of like, well, how much can you do, can you develop versus how much is, is inherent? Yeah, like yeah. how much you just have? Yeah. And then, and then that goes into a deeper question of like, is yeah. everything developed and learned or are there aspects that are, you know? So, inherent? so my personal opinion, I think everyone can see success with a content agency at a certain level. I think there's certain things you sure, just, yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. can't teach. So like for me, I've always said the saying is like, you either got it or you don't, right? So if you don't- What, what is that, got what? What, what, is, what is that, what do you think that is? It's, it's a lot of stuff, bro. It's like personality traits, right? So it's like, even with me, if I go shoot with a client or whatever the case is, like I give them such a good experience that someone that's not me might do the exact same shoot, same person, but maybe they don't, uh, build that relationship with that client the way that I do so they end up staying with me longer paying me more because of kind of my personality or things that I can't really teach yeah. somebody I think a lot of that stuff can be developed but again it's just it's just thought I don't know yeah. I'm not 100% certain Ocean do you think uh, do you think that stuff can be like for, for example communication the ability to like ask questions and like navigate interpersonal relationships a bunch of subjective stuff like that do you think everything can be learned and developed or do you think there's an inherent aspect of like skill sets that are that come that are involved like do you think that you can develop that you've developed everything or you inherently have x traits that have allowed you to get to where you're at it's a little bit of both like you have to have yeah. a little bit of mental horsepower and if you don't it's fine it just means you have to work harder yeah yeah it also boils down to like vision yeah like why are you doing what you're doing you know yeah. like it's like well, i, I want to make cool videos and make some money might not go that far yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean i agree so i think that's huge too i agree
I'm yeah. gonna leave it over to you, man. Dude, uh, okay, so you're hovering around 100K a month. How long did it take you to get there? Um, I guess it depends on like when my starting point was. Sure, yeah. Right, so it could- Probably wasn't know. a hard start date. Yeah, so I would say, uh, so basically to give you long story short of my story, uh, four years ago, I basically worked at Amazon, uh, packed boxes, you know, it was basically modern well, That's the dream slavery. job, why would you leave that? <laughs> you're right, you're right, I should, I should, I should go back. Just go back. Um, <laughs> So yeah, basically from there, um, so I can break it down in years, like year one, year two, year three, year four. So basically year one was basically learning just the basics of cameras, how they worked, ISO, frames, yep. all that stuff. Um, second year was now I can charge money for the skill sets that I know how to use a camera. So do you think you spent a whole year just information gathering mode? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. What yeah. did that look like on a daily basis? Bro, just YouTube videos, bro. Like just I'm, watching I'm YouTube telling you, bro, like I, I probably have over, I would say like a million hours on YouTube, bro. Dang. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy, just straight bro. studying. Never been into, too heavy into books. Now I'm a lot into books, but before it was just straight YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, year two was basically charging people for, you know, camera work and stuff like that. Um, you know, same like you, someone came up to me, hey, I'll pay you a thousand bucks to to do these videos on a monthly basis. I was like, you're going to pay me? A th like, holy shit. Yeah. So then basically once I got that thousand dollar retainer, that's when I quit my job. Right. Because then that, it hit me. I was like, I, I need to go all, yeah. all in on this. Uh, year three was about basically building out the teams, building out kind of a sort of an infrastructure um, to be able to get more clients. And that's kind of, I think we got to about 15, 15, 20K. And then basically the last year was just basically optimizing everything, the team, the systems, the offers, pretty much everything A to Z that basically scaled us to like 100K. That's dope, dude. Yeah. Now, how long do you think it would take you if you got rid of everything and started over again from scratch to get back to where you're at now? 200K? Yeah. I would say probably like two months, bro. And what would you do? What would I do, bro? Uh, okay, Where'd yeah. Let me let, let's see. So if I if I had nothing and I got really put my zero to hundred k in two months. Um, I think so, bro. Okay. Yeah, because for for the most part, um, because I think in business it's, it's pretty. It's not. I think it's simple. It's hard to do shit, but it's pretty simple. It's just simple you know, in theory, difficult in execution. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you need an offer. You need same thing like Axel. Offer lead sales. That's it. Right. So obviously I would dial in on an exact offer. Right. Like this is what I want to sell. Then once I have that offer dialed in just let's get let's get some leads right how do we do leads hey let's do you know ig ads uh facebook ads um you know social funnel youtube videos things like that build my personal brand um start getting leads through there and then start building out systems and processes that i already know pretty much um to be able to facilitate those leads and then you know yeah for the most part that's what i do so you think in order of priority then would would you say get clear on the offer dial in the messaging implement organic plus paid ads book appointments close deals then get the team ready for fulfillment and build the system simultaneously. Correct. Is that kind of what you do? Correct. You, I guess you could build the system before that, but then you need to pay the money for the people to be able to go into it. So if yeah. I have no money, I can't pay anybody sure, for yeah. anything. So I would at least get one or two deals. So just even they could be small deals. If I'm yeah. profiting three, four grand a month, I would put that all into building a team. Yeah, hundred percent. And then yeah. from there, just literally scale it. Yeah. What, what, so. do, what do you think are like? What do you think are the biggest? Maybe not limiting beliefs, but traits that people need to, I guess it could be limiting beliefs. Yeah. What are the biggest traits that people have that prevent them from being able to scale faster, do you think, Specific, specifically within the video space? Traits, bro, they're, I think people are scared, bro. I, I, well, two things, actually. I think people are scared, so they, they overanalyze everything. Scared of what? I can't succeed, I can't pay enough, this is, 10K is impossible, this is too complicated, you know, whatever, right? So I think just being scared, and I guess that goes into like overthinking. I think yeah. too many people overthinking or trying to dial in so many things, it's just like, bro, just like do shit, get it done. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you'll learn from that yeah. and like learn as you go, right? So like how kind of uh, Julian said, a lot of my growth was like dirty, like scaling. Yeah. It yep. was just like, bro, I just did shit. And if Boot it shopping. worked, it worked. You know, and I, I'm not saying a lot of it like that now, but uh, you know, majority of it was that. Dude, I 100% I, I agree. And I think so many people, they struggle with taking action because they want things to look perfect yeah. and be polished before yeah. they go implement. Yeah. Well, I don't want to waste time. Like I want to yeah. like, in, in their head, they're telling themselves, I don't waste time, like, what ex tell me exactly what to do and then I'll go do it. And it's like, yeah. it doesn't really work like that, yeah. right? Like, you can definitely, like, say, this is what works best, go implement this. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're only going to learn by going and taking the action. Yeah, I was it. on a call with Dan Martell, uh, that, that, like, a month ago, maybe? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was, like, a group call. He was, like, a guest on the call. And I asked him a question. I was like, and it was a broad question, but it was intended to be broad. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that holds people back from specifically building a p personal brand, but just business in general, but primarily building a personal brand? Yeah. And he said, fear of success and fear of failure. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, sure, that makes sense. Like, yeah. That makes sense. 
but I never really understood fear of success. And for me, for some reason, his response to it made it, it like it clicked for me. I don't know if it does for anyone else, but like when somebody says that they're afraid of success, what does that mean to you? Like, how do you interpret that? I'm, for, I'm, for, I'm afraid of success. Got it. Um, I think, I think that for me, it would mean that I think people are so br like brainwashed because I guess with schooling and, and your parenting and all of that, that when they see something like that, it doesn't seem possible, right? Like 10K a month or 20K a month to most people is, is so far-fetched because of what, how they grew, you know, how they were raised and, and they were taught. So I think that's like, they're like, ah, I'm scared to reach that because I, I, I was never taught that. I was never grown with those habits or whatever the case well, is. Well, that sounds more to me like but again, doubt, I don't know, right? in their, yeah. doubt in their own ability. I, I wanted to ask because I want to yeah. make sure like I'm not stupid. Like I, was, I also thought the same thing. I was like, I don't really know. Got it, got it. Um, that sounds more to me like just doubt in their abilities to do it, not so much fear of succeeding. Got it. So he broke it down. I was like, dude, oh my gosh, that makes total sense. And I resonated a lot with it Got because it. I feel like, I don't feel like I know. I bottleneck myself. And at the end of the day, I believe everybody's their own bottleneck. Of course. 100%. Yeah. Like you are your own bottleneck. I agree. It's never an employee. It's never some unknown external factor. So it's always you. you. But I was my own bottleneck and I held myself back a lot because I was afraid of success. I just never knew how to put into words. Got it. And so he told me, because I asked him, I was like, damn, I was like, damn what does that mean? Like, what do you mean afraid of success? Who's afraid of succeeding? Like, who's afraid of making more money? Yeah. And he said, those who are not confident in their ability to continue upholding the standard that they will inevitably set for themselves once they achieve the success, mm. right? Like their doubt and like, can I uphold that? Especially as a personal brand, because then once you've achieved it or like you're there, you're at that standard or like you're making 50K a month, they got to maintain it. Like yeah. now, now you have all these people relying on you. Yeah. Now you have, now it's not just you and your own little bubble. It's like, you got people relying on you, bro. You got clients relying on you. You're, you've got a personal brand with all these followers that yeah. watch you, that, that, yeah. that look forward to you. Yeah. And now you have to have the confidence and ability in yourself to know that every day you'll wake up and you'll continue to push and continue to uphold the standard you've set for yourself. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So this is kind of like, so I literally every day I wake up, I'm fucking terrified. I'm fucking terrified, bro. <laughs> bro. Same. Every day I wake yeah. up, I'm like, like butterflies bro like i'll wake up in the morning I'm like holy shit yeah I'm like how am i how am i gonna yeah. go about the day yeah. how am i gonna fulfill for clients like and then I'll, you'll have crazy thoughts of like what if a client just hits me up today and they're like i don't want to continue doing this yeah. but like what if what if something happens to like one of your employees or contractors like yeah. every day dude yeah so that's something that's interesting so yeah. so break that down for me what are you afraid of yeah, bro. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, you you know, I've built this big ass empire now and it's like same shit. It's like, what if this happens? What if that yep. happens? Right. So I think that kind of keeps you on your feet of like, you know, you're always thinking of those things. So you try to solve them over the case is. So yeah. like for me, solve problems that aren't problems yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So when they do come up, you already have something sure. there for it. Um, so I think that's another thing because I've spoken, bro, to, I guarantee you ask Alex and Mosey same shit yep. he's like i wake up terrified yep. i have not you know succeeded enough i don't make enough money whatever the case is so i think that's like a trait that you know i don't know if most entrepreneurs have but i think the successful ones do have that they're so scared of you know when they wake up that they literally do everything in their power to get rid of that but it never goes away 100 percent. and i think i think it's a trait everybody has for yeah. the most part yeah it's either you're afraid of what you have currently built for your success yeah right and that was me, right? And so I kind of held myself back because like, dude, I could, I could get to where you're at. But at the same yeah. time, it's a combination of fear success, but also vision and, and, and purpose. Like, what is it you're trying to do? Got like it. that dude over there has got a ridiculous purpose that I just, it's not what I want. Yeah. It's, not, it's not what I'm going to do. Yeah. I respect the hell out of it though, right? And what you're doing, I respect the hell out of it. Yeah. It's not really what I want. Because like my purpose is, that's still the vehicle, but what I want out of life just looks a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, 100%, I think everybody's terrified. But what's yeah. the difference between guys that are in shoes your shoot like people like you yeah and the ones that are still struggling to make anything happen they all have they all have the same feelings and fears what's the difference conviction bro it's just it's it's again regardless of what you're feeling it's just you got to get it fucking done at the end of the day that's you it. do it anyway yeah. like I, again, everyone again. dude everyone's terrified yeah but guess what you fucking do it anyway yeah. you wake up you're like bro i've got all this stuff I, do you have how many days do you have where like you'll get done with work and you'll want to just like go hide shut everything off every Not, day every day same dude same and it's it's lonely too yeah it's also making like those uh like those decisions that bring the most fears are the ones you have to do so like even for me getting like a studio mm. right I've, i i lived with my dad pretty much my whole life you know then I, I saw kind of a studio and it was like four grand a month and like 
again, I was making like 50, 60 K at that point. And, but my heart was like pounding. Yeah. I was like, fuck four grand yeah. a month, but like, I got to pay this. I've never paid it before. Right. But then again, with the conviction I have, I said, regardless of that feeling, mm. I'm going to pay that four grand a month. And now dude, it's been like the best decision I've ever made. Yeah, um, but again, I just got over that fear. And I think most people don't get over that fear. Or just don't have the conviction to, to do what it, you know, what you yeah. got to do to, to or, get there. Or, or taking solace and understanding and knowing that you're not going to get over it per se. Yeah. You just need to understand how to cope and deal with it and yeah. do it anyway. Yeah. Do what needs to get done anyway. Yeah. Right. So, Fear, fear of success, yep. but then uh, fear of reinvesting back in yourself too. Like, dude, I spend so much money every month. I think I probably spent this month like at least 30, 35 grand, like yep. under, between payroll, between this thing, between um, between that dude, like to help build out the program, yep. between like ad spend and all these different things. I'm at a point now where a couple years ago, I would, I would question everything. Like $200, well, what's that going to get me? Where's that going? Like, is that a worthwhile investment? Now it's just like, that's what I need to do, take yeah. money. Because I know it's just gonna come right back. And I'll, I'll quote Ocean on this. Uh, basically, if you're scared- Ocean's being quoted, wow. Yeah, if you're, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're scared to invest in yourself or in your business or spend money to make more money, go back to a nine to five. Yeah, like yeah. That, that's it, right? Yeah. At the end of the day for me, like, you know, even my systems and processes that I had that really skyrocketed the whole business, um, cost me basically eight grand to, to learn, right? But if I didn't pay that eight grand, you know, I would have never reached it, right? If I was scared to pay that eight grand, so it's like at the end of the day, like, need to make those moves like the only way to make more make more money is to spend more money yep <laughs> yeah seriously unless you're like some freaking outlier like what's her i'm not gonna give her name <laughs> yeah. uh, over in boise which is ridiculous but props to her uh but anyway for the most part no you're not gonna do that uh so okay guys that are just kind of starting out they've got the skill set of i know how to make really awesome videos yep. what other skill sets are they missing that needs to get developed that's like not negotiable i think leadership skills i think um obviously you can make dope videos but from making dope videos, you need to build out a team, right? So if you want to go from a glorified freelancer to a, an actual CEO, you need to build out a team. Um, and the way you build out a team, obviously you need systems, process, all that. But it, another trait that a lot of people don't talk about is leadership, having influence on people to actually want to work for you, right? So one of the things that we do in our in our agency is we do, you know, I do uh, daily team meetings with my admin team, and I do weekly meetings with the entire uh, agency, right? But the thing is, like, when I go to these meetings, I have such big influence i lead them the proper way i give them compliments on certain things i you know i get, if they're doing a good job like less revisions or whatever we give them bonuses right so i built such a good leadership skill set um that everyone that works for us like literally is like right or die right even like how said if a lot of these people have offers for more pay but because we built such a good organization they love the leader that runs the company they're like chris like we want to work for you because of how great you are how you lead us you, you influence us um, and because of that, we built such a great team. And I think leadership is something that, you know, yeah, I don't think a lot of people are talking about, but I think it's like skill. And I think leadership also goes into like your clients, right? Because you're kind of like a leader oh, yeah. within your clients. So like Pace Morby actually told me this. He's like, Chris, you're not just a camera guy. You're not just a videographer. You're like a life coach for your clients because you're like coaching them. You're giving them, you know, you're motivating them when you're when you're on the shoe. Um, you're telling them these things that are helping them, you know, uh, limit beliefs they have you're, you're overcoming mm. those for them like all these things right so like i'm also a life coach for my clients and a life coach for my team you know so i'm just influencing everybody around my system yeah um, and i think that's another reason why i was able to scale so big so you're I'm, I'm really big on when you listen to somebody you're taking advice from someone you better make damn sure they're qualified to give advice in the first place yeah. which is why i'm also really careful if i'm not qualified to give advice on something i'm like i'll shut yeah. right leadership like i think i know a couple things about it like i led a team you've got a pretty big team though and i think you're someone that's qualified if you talk about how do you quantify if whether or not you're a good leader how many people do you have under you and how many of them would be more than happy and willing to follow you into battle right like and i think you definitely built something good there so umbrella leadership right underneath what are the top like three to five four principles slash traits that you need to develop in order to be interesting uh i think you have to one obviously be confident Right. If you're not confident, you're, you know, anyone that works for you or your clients, whatever, can see that. Right. So for I have sure, such yeah. high level of confidence that anything I speak, and I could be completely speaking straight bullshit, right? Like stuff that I don't know about. But, <laughs> but because, you're convicted. <laughs> yeah, but because I have the conviction and confidence, like people will do whatever. Can, can you it imagine is. like going into, like you're going into battle and you're like leading a charge? You're like, I th think we should, you yeah. go. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, nah, bro, we're going head first. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think that's, that's one of the first things. So anything I speak, I say with such confidence that people don't, don't second uh, guess, right? Um, second thing of being a great leader is I think seeing, let's see, put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a good one. Um, I think it's also like obviously self-development, 
right? Like, I think as a, as a leader, you have to get over your own limiting beliefs because then you can't help someone with their limiting beliefs if you have the same ones, right? So I think it's getting over all these limiting beliefs so that you can help other people um, get over theirs. Um, so I think that's the second one is just getting over all limiting beliefs, you know, being the best person that you can be so you can help people um, get mm-hmm. there basically where you're at. And then the third thing, I don't know, this is not a habit, but one thing I do believe though, like your team and your clients and your business will only go as far as you, right? So if you're if you're an eight at leadership, your business organization will only get to an eight, right? Or if you're a five, it'll only get to a five. You need to bring yourself from like a five to like an eight or to like a nine. In what regard? When you say like an eight, an eight in what exactly? And everything, right? Like again, having, having confidence, having uh, direction on, on the vision, uh, having goals, having people, you know, influencing people. So would you say, does, does that, that concept parallel with the idea that you should bring people on your team that are better than you? No, uh, no, I, I think it's just getting those people to where you're, because, or to rephrase, your organization will never grow bigger than your like limiting beliefs or what you can do. Okay, yeah. Right, so yeah, like, if I couldn't believe I can make 100K a month, I would never get there. Yeah. Right. Even if I hired the best people, but if I'm the leader of the organization doing all these things, I would yeah. never reach. Something my coach told me that really like stuck with me and that I think about a lot. I mean, he said, he said a few things like that, but one thing that really stuck with me that I, I always think about is like the people that are on your team, even if it's a small team, yeah. like people that are on your team, bro, they're, they're part-time, they're full-time workers. They're dedicating what a third of their entire life to you, to your vision. So you better damn well make sure that you take care of them that they are also bought into your vision. So what's your vision? What's my vision? Um, Big bomb of a question, drop in your lap. What's yeah. the vision, bro? Tell me. Bro, I think my vision is to be the best person that I can ultimately be. And obviously I still have like certain, like, you know, more of like subconscious limit beliefs, um, things that I have to improve on. For the most part, I think my vision is to also make everybody around me the best person they can be. I love like, just making people the best person that can be. You know, when a client sends me, you know, oh my God, I love to feel that that just got this many views. Or this person, hey, I just closed up a client. Uh, when my, you know, so my my assistant, when I first hired her, um, I think two, three months after, she like sends me a message. She's like, you've been absolutely a game changer. You've actually absolutely changed my life. I was able to go from this, and she sends me a photo of her house, how it looked before, to where it did after. And like her house was like fully painted with furniture. And then before it was like no furniture. She slept on the floor, all this stuff. So like seeing that, like changing people's lives, going from sleep on the floor to having a nice bed, your house is painted, all that, like really motivates me. So I think whatever I take is always going to end up helping other people become that. It's a good answer, dude. So you're pivoting, you're not really pivoting, maintaining the agency. Now you're going to coaching. Yeah. Why? Um, I think I just know too much shit, bro. And I think I'm doing myself a disservice <laughs> by not teaching other people. And again, I, I feel like I'm a good leader. And well, I, yourself I, a disservice and other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm such a good leader and I, I, can, per, I can portray certain messages to people where it clicks with them. Uh, so I think at this point, it's literally my duty to do that. And if I don't do it, I'm just doing myself a disservice. I'm being irresponsible. Um, so at the end of the day, if I can make, you know, grow people with what I have, like I have to do it. That's cool, man. Have you officially launched yet? You got people under you build now still? I have not officially launched it, but it's basically we did a soft launch. We already have four students in the inner circle, um, and then we're going to do a school program, all that stuff. So not yet, but officially launching the inner circle in about two weeks from now. Nice, too. You excited? Still. I do. I, I, I'm excited, I, but I'm fucking terrified. 100%. That's good. But I'm still going to do it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So, still going to do it anyways. So, you know, obviously you've done, uh, you know, you ran a successful content agency. You have a successful coaching agency or coaching uh, program now. Um, out of everything you've done so far, what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned from just overall everything? Huh. And it's so broad. I know it's broad, but what's... It's what's, intentionally broad, though. Yeah, I intentionally. So, like, what's one thing that you're yeah. like, like... I'll answer that. Everybody that's watching this video needs to know this one thing. I'll answer and then you answer. Okay. Um, what comes to mind, there's probably a few things, but you know a lot more than you give yourself credit for, but at the same time, you have no idea how much you still have to learn. And I think the best leaders are the ones that understand that they have, it, it's the, it's a constant balance between complete and utter arrogance that you know you can do it better than anybody else, but then having the humility to A, actually execute on it, and then B, know that you still have so much to learn, right? And it's understanding when to speak and when to shut the fuck up. And it, that's the first thing that came to mind. I, there's probably a bunch of other things, but like I used to, I used to be so 
egotistical when I was younger, around like nineteen twenty. Yeah. Like like there there's 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 a there's a fine line between being confident in what you're doing, and like I said, knowing when to talk and when not to, and there's a fine line between that and then just being arrogant and and and, uh, and some, when you have zero like reason to be. Because when I was younger, I I built nothing. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know who I was. I like I was not a person that should have displayed such confidence or arrogance as I had. Um, so understanding the gap and the bridge between who I was then and who I am now, it, it's, yeah, it's like, it's understanding that like you, you, you know a lot more than you give yourself credit for, but at the same time, you need to always remember that you can learn any, you can, you can still learn so many things from people that are ahead of you and also only surround yourself with people that are a lot more than you are. Right. Like I, with, with this place and like people that help me off like the program, like I, I, I want to make sure they are a lot smarter than I am, right? Like, I, 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 sh I don't want to be the smartest person. I shouldn't, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think for me, bro, I think one of the biggest things is strive for failure. I think if you're not striving yeah. for failure, um, you're doing yourself, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice because, again, you're running away from failure. You're trying to hide away or you're trying to create the perfect plan so you don't fail. Create the perfect offer, perfect this, perfect that, so you don't fucking fail. Yeah. Like need to fucking fail dude right? yeah and, and on that note too yeah. it's it, again so much easier said than done right yeah, it's like yeah and it, it's a lot easier said than done you just have to go do it there's yeah, literally yeah. no secret sauce to go do it yeah. and i it, on that note it's so funny because like if i talk to a lot of guys or i'll be like on a, on a free consulting call or even a coaching session or like whatever or like on instagram live a big question i get a lot is like how do i get more leads it's like well what are you currently doing to get leads that's not working Referral word of mouth. So what does that mean? You're just sitting back and hoping someone's gonna come to you. So you're not doing anything. Yeah. Like stop asking a question to solve a problem that you're not even trying to act on or solve yourself. You're just trying to go to YouTube and find the answers here and there. It's like, listen, you you know what to do. Go talk to someone. Make post. At, like at a minimum, right? Or it's like I'm constantly fulfilling on my own stuff. It's like, how do I hire someone? Did you make a post yet? Yeah. <laughs> did, did like. Did you go to like a, a Facebook group or did you go to a job site and make a post because it takes five minutes? No, then don't complain. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> before you did the whole video agency and all this stuff, what were you doing before? Like, well, yeah. Figuring out who the fuck I was. <laughs> got it. Like, well, I, did you have a job? Like, yeah, yeah. So, job? so I, I, I graduated high school and I got my diploma. The next day I drove out to Vegas to help my dad with the family business out there, which was like culture shock for sure. Cause I grew up in a small town in Ohio. So picking up and going to Las Vegas was like, what, 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 this is the world. This is crazy. You know what I mean? So I went out there, helped him with the family business. And he put me on like front desk. It was, it was cool. Cause he paid me like two grand a month at the time. I was like, that's crazy. But he paid me two grand a month and he was like, work the front counter. You're going to learn sales, learn sales, like learn sales. I'll tell like everyone, if you want to get, if you want to make money, you've got to get good at sales. Like you have to, and you can't hire someone because you're not good at it. I'm not good at sales. So I'm going to go hire someone. No, you have to get good at sales first then you can expect to lead someone and hire someone to train them, right? But if you're not good, don't expect someone else to perform for you. Um, but anyway, I'm derailing. So I went and I worked sales job, learned a lot while I was there. I got a job, worked for Blackburn Coffee out in Texas um, as like their media director. That's where I learned a lot, like in the field. So I think a really smart thing to do is like when you're first starting out, like go, go work for a really good big company that already has a killer marketing team that already has a really good content development team and like learn under them, but be intentional with it. Because you are you could go there and you can become complacent and comfortable in salary, which if that's the case, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, stay there, keep working in salary. But I was intentional. Like, I went to work with them and I told them, I was like, listen, guys, I'm, I'm not going to work as the W-2. Like, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm going to learn. I'm going to give you everything while I'm here. And I'm going to be the best performer you've ever had, which I was. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to be here forever because this yeah. is my ultimate goal. I want to start my own business. Yeah. And they're all for it. So I was there for a year. I learned a ton of stuff. Moved over to Sacramento. Got a job as a media director, paying a little bit more. COVID hit, that was my like time to, okay, now I'm going to start my own thing. So I moved to Boise, started an LLC, started figuring everything out from the beginning. So beforehand, I was just getting out of high school and figuring out what I wanted to do and picked up a sales job and somehow came across a camera and ended up buying. I, like, I'm trying to end it like this. Do you feel like you're special or smaller than everybody else? You know, when, uh, like, not at all. Yeah. No, I, I like, no, <laughs> yeah. not at all. Like I, I feel really dumb a lot. Yeah. If I'm being completely honest, yeah. I, 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 not stupid, but I don't feel smart. Like yeah. with all the people that I'm around, <laughs> especially like this dude over here. <laughs> um, but that, that's, 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 that's the thing, right? Like I, it, like you want to feel that way. So no, I don't feel like I'm smarter yeah. than anybody else. So, and I kind of want to end off on that note. So for me, again, me personally, I think, you know, a lot of people think, yeah, same thing. You have to go to school. You have to be, you have to be, you know, smart at this level, have an IQ, whatever the case is, right. Um, or some sort of credential to reach success. 
but I literally worked at fucking Amazon four years ago, packing yep. boxes yep. to four years later, which is not a long time at all, right? To making a hundred K a month, right? And then we're gonna start the coaching program and all that stuff, right? Um, so I'll be at 150 to 200 K within the next, you know, three, six months, but pretty much anyone listening, I genuinely think that you, you have to get over that limiting belief that you need a certain attribute or a certain thing to reach success. Literally, it all boils down to, and if you agree with me, it's just getting shit done. That's yeah. it. Success is also subjective. And be really clear on what success means for you. Yep, I agree. Right, and don't look at other people and say, that, well, that that's what yeah. success, no, like, like, what success is for you and what success is for him isn't what success Completely is for me, different. right? Yeah. So be really clear on what that is as well. But on that note, dude, how can uh, people reach out to you? Well, if they're like, okay, this is dope. I'm really excited now. How can I actually like go full force and build an agency? What do they do? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> if you're watching this video, it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, so you already know who I am. But if you don't, uh, Instagram, Chris Cinematic, uh, that's the best way to find me. You can DM me. Um, and then by the time this video releases, there's going to be the coaching program that's already launched. So if you're interested in that, you can DM me or click the link in my bio and you'll find it. Uh, and then how, how can people find you? Rich Kraus on Instagram and Rich Kraus on YouTube. How do you how do you spell that? Because most people are at Ridge like a mountain ridge. Okay, yeah. And then Kraus K R A U S S. Okay, yeah. perfect. So guys, I appreciate you for hopping on this episode. Hope you guys got a lot of value. Like and subscribe, comment. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to see in the future, any guests you guys want me to interview, go ahead and leave that down below. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.